flips are somewhat rare in NASCAR, but what's even more rare is a single race with multiple flips. Although this is a very rare occurrence, it's probably happened more times than you would think. Just a few weeks ago at the time of this video, we saw this in the Xfinity Series race at Talladega. Very hard. And this is where the, the wall kicks out right there. And he that, that shot doesn't do justice. And look at this car. Barrel rolling down the back stretch. And that wasn't on lap 48, Dexter Stacy had a huge moment in the middle of the pack. He spun around and hit the rear of Blaine Perkins. Perkins went up the track and was hit by Jade Buford, and the rest is history. Perkins rolled six times and was luckily unhurt. And oh, there goes God. Daniel Hemrick off the big rack of Shadow oh. Reed. And this is the big one here at Talladega. Oh, my. Got one upside down. Is that That's, Daniel Hemrick on his roof? Upside down. About 60 laps later, Daniel Hemrick threw a horrendous block on Sheldon Creed that went very wrong. Most of the field was collected in a massive wreck. The most frightening part was Riley Herbst running under Hemrick's car, which lifted Hemrick on top of the safer barrier. After riding the wall for a couple of seconds, Hemrick fell back on track, but landed upside down and slid to the apron of the track. And this wasn't the only Xfinity race with multiple flips. The last time it happened was in the 2000 Napa 300 at Talladega. Green, last year's runner-up, there he is climbing. He's already got his cap on. Wow. After flipping that car at 190 miles an hour, he's got a sponsor cap on and walking away. <laughs> I guess he's all right. Boy, that just tells you how well these cars are built. And the roll cage did its job because he turned over several times down the front straightaway. Early in the race, Jeff Green had one of the scariest crashes imaginable. He started to blow over into oncoming traffic. Remarkably, no one else hit him. And nearing the end of the race, for the second time on the same day, race coverage cut back from commercial to welcome the audience to another wild flip. We're under caution at Daytona. Michael Waltrip has just taken a stinging side winder flyer from the trioval down toward turn one. One car got in the back of him and he went for a ride and he's climbing out okay under his own power. They're not having to help him out. That's a good sight. Michael Waltrip went flying after getting turned by Jay Sauter. He tumbled nine times in almost the exact same spot as Green did earlier in the race. Now this car goes way up in the air. When it turns around, you see it start to fly there, turns completely up and pancakes right down on the roof. That's what did all that roof damage you were talking about. Then it goes into a barrel roll. Side over side, many, many times. Now it's on the nose of the car and then hits hard on the back. That looked much like Ricky Rudd's flip here in 1984 in what was then the Bush Glass. So Daytona is unsurprisingly a common track in regards to races with multiple flips. However, it is wild that there have been times where two flips occurred in a 50 lap dual race. Beside in turn one. We have trouble on the trioval. Phil Barkdahl, the car becomes airborne, flips down through the trioval area. Other cars spin to avoid as Phil Barkdahl's car became airborne, working its way through the trioval area. Barkdahl's car crashed into the outside wall, landed on its roof, now has bounced back up on the wheels, and there is a gasoline fire at the rear of the car as the safety crews are trying to get out there just as quick as they can. In the first 7 11 twin 125 in 1987, Phil Barkdahl had a wild ride through the trioval. He rolled multiple times and slammed into the outside wall. Then, just moments after his car came to a halt, it bursted into flames. Phil was able to hop out of the car completely by himself and even wave to the crowd. According to several accounts, he blew an engine and then was tagged by another car before, but that isn't caught on video. After the restart, and not even 10 laps later, an equally terrible crash occurred. In turn four. Trouble in turn three. Two cars go spinning. A.J. Foyt and the Jim Sauter car both spin to the high side of the track. Two cars hit them. It is the number 18 car of Tommy Ellis running into Foyt's number 14 automobile and Sauter's car. A.J. Foyt and Jim Sauter wrecked going into turn three and slid down the track directly into the path of Tommy Ellis. 
Ellis tried to take evasive action, but instead got squeezed between Sauter's car and another passing car. Ellis used the rear of Sauter's car to turn onto his side and flip several times. Tommy is certainly a forgotten champion of the sport and won the Xfinity Series Championship back in 1988 and picked up 22 wins in his career. Sticking with the Daytona theme, let's take a look at the 1997 Daytona 500. Hasn't seen it yet for now. He'll kind of cool his heels and fall back in line behind Jeff O'Dine. One car is loose off the back straightaway. Flipping down the back stretch, it is Robert Presley. The car broke loose off turn two. Spun, went up in the air, slammed back down into the ground, and now rolls down on the back straightaway on the grass. Caution for the first time in the Daytona 500. Terry Labonte's car smoking heavily in turn four, perhaps some damage. Robert Presley had possibly the most elegant flip possible in NASCAR doing a complete flip in the air and landing on all fours. However, he did land on all four wheels very hard and pretty much destroyed the car. About 180 laps after Presley's incident, one of the most infamous moments in NASCAR history happened. This for someone else. Here goes the pass. Gordon making a move on the inside of Earnhardt. Oh, Jarrett's loose. Down the back straightaway. Big trouble. Earnhardt out. Up and over, number three. While Jeff Gordon was trying to make a move on second place Dell Earnhardt, Earnhardt got into the wall and eventually cut across the nose of Dell Jarrett. While sliding on his roof, Ernie Irvin hit Dell and caused more damage to his car. Nobody could imagine the possibility of Dell continuing on, but after a commercial break, that's exactly what they discovered. Dell got back into the car, drove it to the pits, and let his crew go to work. Dell went on to finish the race five laps down, but he ran to the end. To take a break from super speedways, let's take a look at the only race in the modern era to have multiple flips at a non-super speedway track. In the 90s, Sonoma was an absolute beast to conquer. Early track design flaws of dirt banks, weak tire barriers, and other features gave cars more opportunities to have dramatic crashes. On lap 25, Steve Park overcooked turn 1 and smashed into a dirt bank on the outside of the turn. He did an entire flip midair and landed on the concrete wall. Luckily for Park, he hit the dirt embankment instead of running head on into the concrete wall that was protected by a pretty weak tire barrier. About 50 laps later, Ken Schrader had a nearly identical wreck to Park. Except this time, Schrader rolled over the dirt embankment rather than hitting it and bouncing off of it. Schrader rolled two times and landed on his roof. For the final race we're going to cover today, we have to take a look at the 2016 Geico 500. Just after halfway, the first major wreck of the day played out. Straight away, 48 hit and Jimmy Johnson goes spinning. Oh, down, Busher. Oh, man. Chris Busher on his lid and lands back on his wheels. Caution. Oh, man, we saw four wide off the corner over there. I was afraid of this. It started with Jamie McMurray pushing Austin Dillon into David Gilliland's path. Michael Annette started the slow for the wreck, but was tagged by Ryan Newman. Annette hit Chris Busher in the perfect place to start tumbling down the backstretch. Busher goes for a big tumble. I Look didn't think that. that thing was going to stop rolling there for a second, DW. Goodness. Oh, boy, Stanley Steamer. Whoa, there's... Oh, and no. around she goes oh, we go. into oh, Kenseth. Man. Oh, gosh. Up in the Kenseth. air and into the wall. Hard. Man, Kenseth. Man, I thought he was going to catch the catch fence back there. The way I it landed not, was... I am not believing that. And then with less than 10 laps to go, Danica Patrick was tagged by Michael McDowell and headed straight to the inside wall. On her way down, she collected Matt Kenseth. The way Kenseth's car was damaged by the impact of Patrick's car allowed a significant amount of air to get under his car and blow him over. Kenseth hit the inside wall upside down and slid for several hundred more yards. Eventually, he was able to land back on his wheels. But remember, this wasn't it for the Geico 500. On the last lap, Kevin Harvick just about went over across the finish line. So, there are even more races with multiple flips, and we're going to cover that in a part 2, which should be out in the next couple of weeks. So, make sure you guys watch out for that, and for any more future uploads. Anyways guys, if you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.